I identified as a person that cared about the environment, but then when I was at Spirit Weavers a couple years ago, I took a class, and at the end of class, everyone had to go around and say, what is one thing you're gonna do to be better to the environment? And at that time, I was making this like plexi jewelry, and I was like, I have to stop making this jewelry. I'm literally buying new plastic and like making this stuff out of it. And she said this phrase, what are you willing to risk? Are you willing to keep going to Starbucks every day and risking that we kill all of the salmon? Are you willing to continue to buy things on Amazon and risk that we cut down all of the old growth trees because we need to have more cardboard to buy more products? Thinking about that, what am I willing to risk and what am I willing to do about it? I was like, I need to think about the, the end of life of all the items. So I was like, okay, cool. You want this dress. Well, where did it come from? Who made it? What kind of dye was used? Where was the fabric grown? Who worked in a sweatshop to make this thing? Now my policy is it has to be used and it has to be compostable. That's kind of where I was coming from with this trying to live a zero waste life. I was like, okay, you need to stop creating trash because everybody needs to stop creating trash. We have to do something about this and we have to get really creative and we have to do it now. Obviously, I drive a van and so I'm using fossil fuel, but I've restructured the way that I travel and instead of just going out for one thing, I'm trying to do as many things as I can on the way and being as strategic as possible about what I bring and where I travel and how I travel. I was living in Los Angeles and I was really missing New Orleans. I had moved out of there to be in a relationship and I missed the life I had and the creativity and like how affordable it was. I didn't have a vehicle for 10 years and I definitely never thought about getting a van. My friend said to me, who needs a man when you have a van? And I was just like, oh my God, she's right. Ah! But really what that meant to me was like, you don't need to rely on a man to do the things that you want to do in your life. You can just do them. I was like, wait a minute. If I get rid of my house, get a storage unit and get a van and then only have a room during the winter when I actually need a room, then I would be able to see my friends more, do all these gigs way easier, and it would cost me less. And that's how I've been living for the past year and a half. This is like extremely plush to me because I'm like, oh my God, I have most of my clothes, multiple towels, and I get to sleep in my own bed every night. And so I feel a lot more free, a lot more mobile, and a lot more self-reliant. I knew that I wanted to have enough space to be able to sit up. I found a woman that knows how to weld because I wanted to like give my money to women in the process of doing this. We took the seats out and then built this frame, which actually like comes out and is my bed when I live in New Orleans in the winter. I, I basically was like, okay, you have X amount of space on either side of these things to put the clothes. And so then it was like each category got a bag. It's like tops. You can only have however many tops fit in this bag. This is the door that I open most often, and so I'll have stuff that I access all the time, like my tools, my jewelry, my computer stuff, and like bathroom stuff. I got this cool box for my jewelry. This was like definitely an old sewing box. And then if I want to do my hair, I tack up my little thing. So when I was doing the project of not buying things, you know, well, first of all, I stopped going to thrift stores. I stopped going to the flea market. I just, I stopped going into any establishment that was about shopping or buying things. And also I wasn't tempted to like get stuff for that quick happiness fix. I was allowed to buy food. I was allowed to buy gas and I was allowed to buy things that helped me live a better zero waste life. So for example, I got this bag at the thrift store that is made out of trash. So there's really no more upcycled thing than a thrifted bag made out of garbage. These metal lunchbox containers. Like I still use toilet paper for poop, but as a woman, like I use a lot of toilet paper for pee. And so now I don't have to do that. I can just wash that on hot with my towels and sheets. Instead of a kombucha or a tea or something, I have like a little glass and uh, now I just have like a cutting board and a knife and a lemon squeezer and I'll make lemon water if I really want a delicious drink. This uh, little thing was the bottom of a skirt and I cut it out and then added a ribbon. So this is just a little upcycled accessory thing. These earrings I made, one of my roommates in New Orleans uh, 
has this rope jewelry line. He saves me the scraps. It's so much more meaningful to me to have things that are made out of things that would otherwise go in the landfill that I can now be like, this is a beautiful piece of powerful jewelry. I've recently been trying to get rid of pants. A friend of mine a couple of years ago came over to my studio one time and she was like, pants are a tool of the oppressor. Like they block our flow, like the energy. And I was like, oh my God, she's right. Pants, shorts, that was my thing. I was like, skirts are so girly. Like, I don't know, I just, was caught in the gender paradigm in, in all these different ways that we all are. So then it's been a couple years of me now trying to do that. Living in the van, it can be annoying to get dressed sometimes. And so having things, I feel like I wear more dresses because that's how long it takes to get dressed. But kind of about the whole thing, like, yes, it's more work to bring your own containers. It's more work to be prepared. And, and all the things about living a zero waste life, there are things about van life that are mildly inconvenient, like the fact that I can't stand up. But you know what? Life goes on. <laughs> and I figure it out. Sometimes I have to lay down to put stuff on. I just always gravitated towards weird clothes and bright colors and busy patterns. And, you know, my parents were definitely not excited about it. They wanted me to kind of be more normal looking, I think. I never cared about that stuff because to me, shame was a very stupid and impractical emotion. Like, why? this is what I like. I'm wearing it. It makes me feel good. So why am I going to change the way that I want to be? to please what someone else might think. Like, that just never made sense to me. I was just happy being myself. I knew that, like, me being myself wasn't hurting anybody, and so I never tried to put myself into a box. I started this project coming up on two years ago now where I was like, I'm just going to wear all red every time I'm on my period as, like, a protest towards shame. A lot of times people are like, you look amazing. Where are you going? I'm like, I'm on my period. And then they laugh and they're kind of like, whoa, like wasn't expecting that answer. But then they're also like, right on, okay. The patriarchy doesn't want women to be empowered, doesn't want us to be self-reliant and to love ourselves because when we don't love ourselves, we're easier consumers because we are filling that void of self-hatred with products and objects. We are told our bodies are sinful, periods are gross, Men won't want to have sex with you. You shouldn't let anyone know you're on your period. You should hide it and it should basically be a secret. I'm letting the world know that this is happening to me. And if I saw someone and I knew they were on their period, I would be more gentle with them. You need to move slower because you're releasing, you're reflecting. Capitalism doesn't want you to move at a slower pace because it wants you to be a productive contributing member, spending those dollars, making those dollars, like getting it in the system. And so by being like, no, I'm actually going to love myself and celebrate the fact that I'm on my period. You are transforming the way that we interact with the system. I definitely was not stoked about being a woman and then learning more about my body, learning about my anatomy, learning about what it means to be connected to the earth and to operate from more of a yin place, the feminine instead of a yang, fast, masculine place, which is what our culture is dominated by. That's what the patriarchy is, is just that the male energy is the dominant energy. It's like we're just out of balance and we need to integrate more slowness and more self-awareness and that anything that naturally happens by suppressing those, that's what leads to disease, dis-ease. Why is it that women don't have as many orgasms and like what is it about the way that we relate to sex that's stopping us from being able to be as fully expressed as men, which I don't think that men are as fully expressed as they can be because they're not operating in this kind of mutual exchange. It's that same attitude of taking. I want, I desire, I want the woman to do this. Like I want the earth to give me all these resources so that I can have these things. And when we kind of back up and we're like, what does the earth need? The earth needs me to let go of all this shame so I can stop buying all this crap I don't need and I can actually start to take care of her. That's like been definitely the biggest lesson of all of this is just reconnecting to what really matters and reconnecting to my humanness and just reminding people like, yo, being a human is an incredible experience and 
it's an immense responsibility because of these opposable thumbs and what we can do and make cars and planes and trains and the internet and sex dolls. We have to ask ourselves, should we be doing this? Is this the best use of our time and energy? And what happens when the earth is filling up with our pad and tampon waste because we don't want to deal with cloth pads or a diva cup or something reusable because that means we have to face the blood instead of being like, ew, gross, throwing it away and not looking at it, not looking at our bodies, all these ways that we're disconnected from who we really are. My vision for the world is that people would realize that we are not the most important thing on this earth. We're not above nature and we're not below it. Our ancestors lived for hundreds of thousands of years without electricity, Starbucks, Zappos.com, like all these things that we now are like, oh, that's life. It's just like, no, that is absolutely not what life is. If you think about it, trash is only, as a concept, a couple hundred years old. And yet, in just a short couple hundred of years, after burying our poop in the ground, growing our own food, foraging for nuts and berries, and being in communication with the seasons and the cycles of Earth and our bodies and all of this, we now, overnight, in the blink of an eye in the human history, have totally destroyed the planet and we just keep doing it. What I want is for people to take a look outside of their immediate environment and at the environment at large, quiet yourself and listen to the sounds that are beyond the man-made sounds of the city. Shed in your mind like your clothes, your role in society, how many Instagram followers you have and just be like, I am Earth. Like. This is me. How can I move through this world given the fact that we are in the patriarchy, it's capitalism is raging on, and if we want to create something new, we can start doing it. Really get clear on what you need and want, hold sacred to you what matters to you, and find a place where you want to put your energy for the betterment of the planet and for all people. And the more people that can do that, the better that we're all going to be because we're not going to be mindlessly just going about their little program. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of our closet series featuring Corinne. Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Elisa, Lily's mom. And we're the creators of Style Like You. Do you want to talk a little bit about our sponsor? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wanted to say from the bottom of our heart, a huge, huge thank you to Matt Hippie, an amazing skincare line that make beautiful, beautiful products in beautiful bottles and boxes and <laughs> with natural and organic ingredients that make you feel absolutely amazing. And they are committing to reducing the carbon imprint on the planet. You should also be aware that Matt Hippie <laughs> is now making a makeup line that has an array of amazing colors. All of Matt Hippie's products, including their makeup, have no synthetic dyes, no silicone, and are completely vegan and cruelty-free. Matt Hippie is being super generous and offering Style Like You viewers 20% off their products for the next month after watching this video. So you can get 20% off by going to madhippie.com and using the coupon code STYLE at checkout. And if you are inspired by our message of self-acceptance, it would be so amazing if you could help spread the word by subscribing to our YouTube channel, joining us on Patreon, sharing this episode. And don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified when we have a new video. There's many, many coming up. And your support and your participation <laughs> of watching our videos and being part of our YouTube channel means everything to us. And without you, this movement for acceptance wouldn't be happening. Bye, everyone. Bye.